I'm going pro. Osamu remembered very vividly how Suna mouthed those words after he just argued with Atsumu about that very topic. He was sitting on the steps of the gym entrance, legs pulled up against his body and arms crossed on his knees. Osamu's head snapped up as Suna uttered the three meaningful words and stood bored with his arms in his pockets beside him. Samu sought Suna's gaze, but he stared into the distance outside, not moving his eyes from the setting sun as he slowly sat down next to his best friend, Osamu's eyes following him steadily. It must have looked foolish, Mia Osamu, who seemed as if he didn't care about anything, couldn't take his startled gaze off of Suna Rintero, who couldn't have been more emotionless but was now noticeably struggling with himself, however. Say something, Suna spoke almost desperately, while still not paying Samu a glance. He simply couldn't. He couldn't look him in the eyes and tell him that they were parting ways too. Such a coward. After all, it was obvious from the beginning, wasn't it? School would end, and so would their friendship. Well, what can I say? I just got in a shitty fight with Tsumu and made clear to him that I'm quitting as soon as we finish school. I'm not gonna tell you what to do, Rin. Suna narrowed his eyes and breathed calmly. He felt Osamu's piercing gaze from the side, but he just couldn't look him in the eyes. He couldn't tell him to his face that their time together had an expiration date. The grey-haired twin directed his gaze forward by now, resting his chin back on his folded arms. He breathed quietly as well, not making a sound before breaking the intangible tension between them. Do you know which team you wanna play for? Suna shook his head, now bringing his legs close to his body as well and taking the same sitting position as his best friend. He hesitated briefly before letting the words fall from his lips. Division 1 would be cool but seems like a lot of work. Could be quite exhausting, I guess. I wouldn't mind Division 2 right now either. You'd definitely be made for Division 1 inches. Osamu cracked a smile and the corners of his eyes creased, now literally drawing Suna's gaze, whose own expression couldn't have been more worried. Osamu didn't laugh often. He was serious, cool, calm, just the complete opposite of Atsumu. That's what always gave Suna so much peace and strength. He liked Osamu for his manner, because he and Suna were so much alike. And every time Suna saw that very smile, he was overcome by this strange feeling in the area of his stomach, this dryness in his throat, this madness of his heart. Suna enjoyed Osamu's quiet demeanor, but he loved every laugh he could coax out of the gray-haired man. Pure satisfaction. EJP Ragins. Suna blurted out, dazed by Osamu's beams. Or Tachibana Red Falcons, that would be cool. Samu's beams gradually disappeared, shrinking to a soft smile. He looked at Suna, the corners of his mouth slightly turned up and his cheek resting in his arms, blushing faintly. As long as you get out of Hyogo, huh? And Suna's heart slid into the pit of his stomach, his eyes widening at Osamu's soft words. He shrugged it off, leaning back and propping himself up with his palms, his gaze averted from Samu the entire time. It's still a year until we're done with high school. A lot can change until then. Osamu hummed in agreement, bringing his gaze back to the front as well. For a moment they both said nothing, the silence somehow not at all comfortable as they were used to. So Samu eventually broke the hush. Rin? Um. We both suck at written messages. Suna raised an eyebrow, looking at Osamu from his position slightly behind him. Not a clue why he was starting this right now, but he was absolutely right. The messages between Osamu and Suna mostly consisted of Suna sending him some memes or blackmail of his teammates and Osamu proudly sending him pictures of his food if it was done particularly well or if he wanted to make Suna jealous. They didn't text each other a simple hello, how are you or do you have time today, no. Suna and Osamu would just stand at each other's front door when they wanted to talk and spend time together. It didn't matter if the other had time or not, they would just pass by before calling or writing to each other. If it was up to Suna, that wouldn't be a problem. He was on his phone practically 24 stroke 7. It was different for Osamu, though, if it was up to him, he most likely wouldn't even own a phone. So, Suna's gaze was fixed on Osamu, watching every little reaction of the grey-haired twin and feeling a lump spread in his throat. Osamu sighed, taking a deep breath before standing up, patting his pants and butt to get rid of the dirt, and turning to Suna. He put his hand out to him, signaling he was going to help him up, and looked at him again with that faint smile, which seemed slightly pained now, though. When you become big and famous, promise me one thing okay? Suna's eyes widened, staring up at his best friend's face, searching his gaze and the ash-gray eyes that always stilled and mesmerized him. He looked at Osamu expectantly, every muscle in his body tensed. Remember me, will ya? Suna blinked once, twice, ten times before realizing what Osamu had just said. He squeezed out a soundless breathy laugh, almost in relief, and then slapped Osamu's hand, which pulled him up effortlessly. Of course I will. 
He slowly let go of Samu's coarse hand and gently patted him on the back before they walked back into the gym. His touch so gentle, his hand so small, so fragile, that Osamu wanted to hold him close and never let go. To protect him, to get more of his touch. Idiot. If anyone's going to be famous in this place, it's going to be you and your food. And there it was again, that irresistible smile of Osamu's that melted Suna's heart and left his mind unable to think straight. He wanted more of it, and he couldn't imagine having enough of it in a year. When Suna let go of Samu's back, they both immediately realized that they were missing something. The smiles of both slowly disappeared and it was Osamu who once again broke the silence. Come on, let's go back. Mia Osamu and Suna Rintero were 15 when they first met. Two first graders who hit it off right away, because even if Osamu might have been at Sumu's twin regarding genetics and appearances, he was definitely Suna's on the inside, character-wise. Mia Osamu and Suna Rintero were 16 when they made the promise to never forget each other even after graduating and parting ways. How could they ever forget each other? Osamu noticed, in fact, how beautiful and delicate Suna was, and Suna, too, could not tear his eyes away from Osamu's mesmerizing gaze, caught in the affection he desired so much. Mia Osamu and Suna Rintero were 17 when they finished off the teams at Inter High for the last time. When they were on the court together one last time and Suna devoured that laugh of Osamu's after spiking successfully a ball. Like an addiction and Osamu realized how Suna's gentle features and moves made him look so impossibly hot. Where is Atsumu? Still watching the match F Sakusa Kiyumi. Simp. Osamu grinned, knowing that Suna was absolutely right. Atsumu had been head over heels in love with Sakusa ever since they met at the All Japan Youth Training Camp and the chance to see him play at Inter High in Tokyo for a while longer was something he couldn't pass up. Inarizuki was once again eliminated, which was a shame, but somehow not too bad. So Osamu and Suna went back together from the gym to their hostel, where a couple of other Inarizuki players were already waiting for them. Seems like it was our last tournament together, huh? Getting sentimental now, Rin. Osamu teased him, smiling mischievously. Suna's heart beat fast, his cheeks blushing slightly. I'm actually quite glad that we have one less Mia on the court now. Osamu snorted and laughed, hands tucked loosely into his pockets. Suna yawned and stretched, folding his arms behind his head. His gaze kept roaming over to Osamu out of the corner of his eyes, examining his best friend's body from head to toe. The rosy color was back on Suna's cheeks. I'm tired, Suna admitted. Shall we take a nap? Sounds good to me. The two arrived at the hostel and laid their things down in the hallway. In the entrance hall were several couches where some of the Inarizuki players were sitting and talking to each other. Osamu and Suna sat down on the empty seat next to Jinjima. Suna yawned once more before dropping his head to the side and Osamu dropped his head on the backrest and stared at the ceiling. Their knees bumped against each other and Osamu had the desire to feel more of Suna. They both closed their eyes and blocked out the voices around them. Rin. MMM. Suna kept his eyes closed, had his arms wrapped around his body to protect himself from the cold. Lean against me, you're gonna get a stiff neck like that. Suna blushed even more, but immediately dropped wordlessly against Osamu's shoulder. The touch made them both shiver. Osamu, who noticed again how gentle Suna was, and Suna, who was immediately calmed by Osamu's warmth. The two didn't touch often, but when they did, it was magical, for both of them. Mia Osamu and Suna Rintero were 17 when they graduated from high school and they joined Atsumu in posing for one last group photo. While Atsumu cried incessantly, Osamu and Suna looked deeply into each other's eyes and smiled faintly, feeling their hearts beat faster and faster at the engaging looks and feeling something like sorrow, knowing both of them would now part ways. Remember me, Osamu said once again and Suna smiled faintly, tears twinkled in the corners of his eyes as he tried to suppress crying so do you. And with that Suna went into the train, leaving Hyogo and moving to Nagano to join the EJP Ragens. Osamu always knew, he would be made for the Division 1 V League in Japan. Mia Osamu and Suna Rintero were 19 when they had been out of contact for almost over a year and each other's longing ate them up so much that it hurt. It felt wrong not to be with the other, it felt wrong not to feel the closeness of the other, it felt wrong not to be together anymore. They were 19 when they both realized how much they loved each other, how much they would always do and they were 19 when Suna stood outside Osamu's shabby apartment and rang the doorbell non-stop. What the fuck? A muffled voice was heard behind the door coming closer and closer until the door flung open and a not-so-gray-haired twin started yelling, obviously completely annoyed. Dude it's fucking 1am and he stopped once he saw Suna in front of him. Suna, who was standing in the rain. Suna, whose eyes were red from crying. Suna who was soaked all over his body and shivering. Rin. It had been a whole fucking year since they had last talked. 
What are you? Osamu fell silent again, looking at his former best friend in disbelief. Was that really Sunarin in front of him? Of course. How could Osamu ever forget the soft features, the fox-like eyes, and that mischievous visage? I've had a shitty day, and I fucking miss my stupid-ass best friend. Osamu gulped, unable to do anything but continue to stare at Suna in disbelief and shock. Can I come in now, or what? One year. It's been a whole year since they last had contact with each other, and now he was standing outside Osamu's door just like that. Soaked, shivering, drained. TCH. Suna clicked his tongue before lunging at Osamu, pulling his best friend into an embrace that couldn't have been tighter out of fear of losing him again as soon as he let go. Rin. Osamu's voice was muffled. He spoke against Suna's arms that were wrapped around his neck and pressed him close, pulling him tighter and tighter. He hesitated at first, but now moved his arms around his best friend's slender body, wrapping them around his waist and hugging him so tightly that it was impossible for Suna to escape the embrace. Osamu sighed, ran his palm over his back and inhaled his scent. Screw getting practically soaked by Suna. All that mattered now was holding him in his arms and never letting him go again. Fuck. Rin. Osamu had to fight tears by now and hugged Suna even closer while his heart came to ease. Never in his life had he hugged Suna like he was doing right now and it felt absolutely right. His missed him. They missed each other. Fuck you Samu. You could have answered to my ginger meme. Osamu frowned and hugged Suna even closer. I texted you that my phone broke, didn't I? You were the one who ignored the picture of my first Anijiri creation. I never even got a single food picture from you. Yeah, because you blocked me. Osamu frowned, his gaze growing darker, and Suna gasped, now pushing away from Osamu, looking into his now equally teary grey eyes. Wait what? You blocked me. Bullshit. You blocked Sumu. Yeah, because he was bugging me. And then you blocked me. Look. Osamu pulled his phone out of his pocket and wow Suna's eyes widened, because Samu usually never had his phone with him. He opened his messages and showed Suna their chat history. Suna took the phone and frowned, because what Osamu had said was actually true. Well, except for the insinuation that Suna had blocked him. Oh my fucking god, Samu. Osamu, still frowning, chewed the inside of his cheek and watched Suna carefully. His gaze snapped up to him as Suna pulled his phone out of his pocket and held both screens in front of his face. Osamu's eyes widened and his face turned pale. The last two digits were mixed up. Suna brought his arms back down and just looked at Osamu blankly, horrified. Osamu swallowed, staring into Suna's eyes before they both bursted out laughing not a minute later. Teary, soggy, and completely out of it, they threw themselves back into each other's arms. You're an idiot, Samu. You could have just asked Sumu for my new number. Didn't want to unblock him. Osamu chuckled, shook his head slightly and whispered more on. Suna chuckled too. Suna was dressed in Osamu's clothes, and Osamu had changed as well. Suna leaned against the bathtub, sat between Osamu's legs and let him blow dry his hair. He leaned his head against Samu's leg and played with the hem of his pants. Osamu turned off the blow dryer and put it aside. Then he sat down next to Suna, knees bent, arms resting on them, and right shoulder pressed against Suna's left shoulder. Suna automatically dropped his head onto Samu's shoulder, and they both immediately realized how much they missed this. It was quiet, and that was okay. They didn't have to talk to each other much. Honestly they never did. Osamu and Suna had something that not many possessed and that was the gift to understand each other perfectly without words, to empathize with each other's feelings. Yeah team's really good, huh? Sumu's always complaining, saying he'd rather have you on the team than play against yeah nasty spikes. Suna snorted, leaning even more against Osamu. I would have passed by, why no? I'm still here at culinary school for one year, but then I would have come to watch a match between you and Sumu and I would have said look, my two best friends are playing against each other. Suna reached for Osamu's sleeve and now lifted his head. Their eyes met and Osamu shuddered briefly as Suna's full body heat was no longer felt. As if something was missing, again. They stared into each other's eyes, their gazes fixed on the other, and their pulses picked up more speed. Osamu blushed and Suna's cheeks turned a soft pink as well while both moved unconsciously closer. Mia Osamu and Suna Rintero were 19 when they found each other again, and they were 19 when Osamu learned how Suna's soft lips felt on his own, bringing a sense of bliss that flooded them both. They were delicate 19 when Osamu took Suna's cheek in his hand, drawing his eyebrows together and deepening his best friend's kiss, and they were sweet 19 when Suna ran his hand through Osamu's naturally dark hair and would never let go. So they started dating and one thing led to another.
they became a couple, trying to manage their long-distance relationship as best they could, and actually talked on the phone via FaceTime almost every day. Believe it or not, Osamu practically became addicted to his phone because he could never get enough of sooner. A few months into the relationship and the twins' birthday was coming up. Luck wasn't on their side, of course, because the day was a crappy Tuesday. So that means the twins can't celebrate together because Osamu had to go back to culinary school the next day and Atsumu was in Osaka with MSBY. It's almost midnight. Do you have anything planned? Suna asked curiously over FaceTime. Osamu, of course, understood that he couldn't come. After all, they were in the middle of the season and Nagano was too far away to just drop by. Nothing much. Don't think I'll be awake that long tonight Osamu replied, just settling down on his couch. I have a surprise for you Suna grinned, biting his lips and seeking Osamu's gaze. The ash gray eyes sparkled in response. Osamu smirked, and Suna's heart melted. That smile just kept throwing him off, back then at 15 as it did now at 19. Osamu raised an eyebrow and replied playfully what, are you dull in all the blackmail you can use against me? Suna gasped. I don't have anything on you, Samu. You still have that video on your phone of Tsumu marking me laugh and me spit in my drink completely across the table at our family dinner. Yeah okay but that was gold. Come on Samu, that was the perfect moment, there's no way I'm deleting that. Osamu shook his head and laughed. Yeah an idiot Rin and Suna laughed as well, biting his lips again while looking into Osamu's bright eyes through his phone. My idiot, Osamu added happily and Suna's heart melted even more. Would you open the door for your idiot then? Osamu's smile slowly disappeared, and his expression noticeably became more and more confused. He frowned and gulped. Had he heard Suna correctly? Open up, Samu. Suna couldn't help laughing at Osamu's reaction and just waited for his beloved to realize that he was actually standing in front of the door. Suna hung up and Osamu rushed to the door, yanking it open and staring at Suna in disbelief. This was a dream, right? Surprise. Suna stood in front of him, grin wider than ever, and he would have loved to record Samu's reaction right then, but he had sworn to himself, no blackmail on his birthday. Rin Osamu whispered, still in disbelief that his best friend, his boyfriend, his true love was actually standing in front of him. He grabbed his wrist and pulled him into a loving and passionate kiss. Embraced his cheeks, peppering kisses all over his face because he was so happy that his Suna was here with him. Oh god I love you so much, you know that? Suna chuckled, swinging his arms around Osamu's neck, claiming more kisses. Me too. Mia Osamu and Suna Rintero were both 19 when they realized that they each not only had a simple crush on their best friend, but that they really loved each other wholeheartedly. Mia Osamu was 19 when he first felt Suna's soft lips on his own, when he first learned what it felt like to have Suna's mouth on his, and he was 20 when he learned the feeling of having Suna's kisses everywhere else on his body as well. Mia Osamu was 20 and Suna Rintero was 19 when both realized and were determined that they would never want to be without the other again. That all they wanted was to see the other man be happy. Mia Osamu was 20 and Suna Rintero was 19 when Osamu wrapped Suna in his arms, slowly sliding his fingers over his beloved's bare skin, tracing the gentle features of his exposed back and bottom, and nothing else mattered except their mutual love. Mia Osamu and Suna Rintero were 20 when they made the promise to never stop loving each other and that promise was kept forever.